Today we're going to talk about EAS credentials, this command in your terminal using Expo's EAS service. Using EAS credentials is a great way to debug your code. I've worked with a lot of developers adding Expo push notifications to their app. When they say their push notifications do not work, one of the first things I have them do is go to EAS credentials in their terminal. This is how you can know if push notifications have been properly installed. So if you've ever had any bugs related to push notifications in Expo, we're going to go through some of the most common debugging tactics I know of that I've learned over the years. And we'll get to EAS credentials in just a moment. But first, we need to make sure you have everything set up before EAS credentials will work. The first thing you should do is use nativenotify.com. If you're not using nativenotify.com, you're already doing it wrong. Setting up push notifications with native notify is as easy as installing these packages, importing this function, and pasting this function at the top of your index.tsx file. And you're already done. You're ready to start sending push notifications. And a cool side note is you can now send AI generated push notifications using nativenotify.com. Just schedule the times each week that you want our AI agent to send push notifications for you. And our notification agent will send push notifications tailored to each individual user that you have, causing your click through rates to skyrocket. So now that you've already used native notify or you set up your own service, here is my list of debugging steps that I go through, finishing with EAS credentials. The very first thing you need to do is to go to expo.dev and make sure to create an account if you haven't already. The next thing to check before getting to EAS credentials is to make sure you ran EAS init in your app. The way you can know if you've run EAS init or not is to go to your app.json file, come down to the bottom where it says EAS project ID, if your app has a project ID, then that means you have run EAS in it before. If you do not run EAS in it, your push notifications will not work. So this is very important. The next thing to check for is to make sure you have the right Google services.json file. In your Firebase account, you can find that by going to this settings gear icon, project settings. And in the general tab, if you scroll down, you can find the app with the matching bundle ID and make sure you download that Google services.json file. And that's the one that you're using. Put that Google services.json file in the root of your project. Another thing to check for is the Google services.json name. If there's something like a number in the name, it's probably because you've downloaded multiple Google services.json files before. You'll want to make sure to delete the numbers so that it looks just like this Google services.json. JSON. Some other things to check here related to your Google services Firebase for Android is to make sure in your app.json file, if you scroll down here to the Android object, make sure you've placed Google services file, that key there with the value being dot slash Google services dot JSON. And the other thing is to make sure there's a package value here and make sure the bundle ID exactly matches. Those are all the major things with Android. With iOS, you just need to make sure your bundle identifier is the correct value that you use in your Apple developer account for this app. This next thing is a big deal. Make sure to check that you don't have any Android or iOS directories in the root of your project. If you've ever ejected out of Expo before, you'll see an iOS or an Android folder directory in the root of your project. Project. If you see that, that could break push notifications. You should delete those files if possible. And instead of creating those files, ejecting out of Expo, you should be running EAS build to build your app. When you run EAS build, the EAS service will create your Android app for you and it will create your iOS app for you and push notifications will just work correctly. If however, you have ejected out of Expo before and there's an Android directory or an iOS directory in the root of your project, push notifications probably will not work. So that step's really important. Don't eject out of Expo, just stay in managed workflow and let EAS build create your app for you. Okay. 
Okay, so say you have done all of that. You are now officially ready to run EAS credentials to make sure your push notifications are set up correctly. After running EAS credentials, select the platform you're working with, whether Android or iOS. I'm going to select Android first. The next step is to pick the profile that you would like to check to see if it's configured correctly or not. Another note here related to EAS build is if you run EAS build, it will configure all of this for you. So you should not run EAS credentials on your own before running EAS build. You should run EAS build first and just let Expo set up everything for you. This again is for debugging purposes. So say you've built your production app already, you can go down to the production build, or if you're in development, you can go to the APK build if you built an APK file. And I'll go ahead and go to the APK file. Once you get to this screen, there's a couple things you need to check. The first is the key store. As you're running EAS build, you should select to let Expo add the key store for you. If that has worked successfully during EAS build, you should see up here something about a key store. If you see a value under configure build credentials that starts with key store and it looks like this, it means you've successfully set up a key store. The next part is a little confusing. You do not need to go to push notifications legacy because this is broken. FCM legacy is not working anymore. They've officially moved on to Google services. So even if you're trying to debug push notifications, do not go to the push notification selection. Instead, go to Google service account. Google service account is the new Firebase push notification service. You'll wanna go there to do any checking. The first First thing you'll want to do is to come up here where it says FCM V1. This is the Google service account one. You want to make sure there's a value here under that heading specifically VCM V1. If there's a value under there, that means you have push notifications set up correctly. If you do not have a value there, then you need to come down here and say manage your Google services key for Play Store submissions or for push notifications. If you're debugging push notifications, you'll want to make sure to say the push notification one. And what it's going to say is you can either create a new one or you can select an existing Google service account key. I would say just select an existing one. But again, all of this happens during EAS build. But if for some reason your push notifications are not working, it's possible you accidentally selected no during the EAS build process. And this is how you would set up either a new Google service account key for push notifications or an existing one. And again, it should look something like this. And now if you run EAS credentials again for iOS, go down and select iOS. You can do the same thing here. For iOS, there's no APK development or preview. There's only production. So I'm gonna select production. It's gonna ask you to log into your account. Okay, and while we're here, I am getting this error I haven't seen before while I'm logging into my iOS account. I'm going to follow the fix instructions that I just found in case you run into this as well. It says to make sure to run npm i g eas cli. This is to make sure you have the most up to date version of eas. Okay, and actually, so that was another related error. What this error ended up being is you'll notice in the returned HTML that Apple returned, it said maintenance. So Apple itself is having maintenance. So if this ever happens, just wait for like another hour or maybe till the next day to make sure Apple's not in maintenance anymore and everything should work. But I'm also reading it's a good idea to run NPM I global EAS CLI to make sure you're on the most up-to-date version. And after you run EAS credentials and select iOS, once you're logged in, You'll just want to make sure that your push notifications credentials are connected to this build, which again, if you ran EAS build and just said yes to everything, it should have all been set up for you. But in case you accidentally said no, after you log in, you can either select push notification credentials that are already in your Apple account, which I would suggest you do that. Or if you have not done that already, you can create new push notification credentials.
credentials in your EAS terminal. And that is how to check that your push notifications are set up properly for iOS as well using EAS credentials. And that is how you use EAS credentials to debug your push notifications. If you have any other advice on how to debug push notifications for Expo, let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure to go to nativenotify.com, check out our new AI push notifications. They're pretty cool. I'll put a link in the video description below about our AI push notifications. You can even send individualized push notifications. So our AI agent is able to look at your individual's past action history and send custom push notifications to each individual user that they are most likely to tap on. These custom AI generated push notifications can cause your engagement rates to skyrocket. So if you haven't already, go to nativenotify.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.